I believe that every child of God must be a student of the word. Uh, it is something that I believe without a shadow of a doubt, Jesus has displayed as our role model in the word of God. So as we start today, let us dedicate this time before the Lord. Holy Spirit, come lead us, come and guide us, come take your place in our lives. Come give us revelation, come amplify the word of God, come and give us the full revelation of the word of God. Come and open our eyes of our understanding so that we may see the depth of the word of God. We thank you and we pray in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And everyone says amen and amen. Today we will be looking at topic 61. And we are going to be looking at the names of Jehovah. Um, I start by apologizing for my voice. I am a bit under the flu. I am believing the Lord for full healing. So I believe you can hear me clearly, though there will be a bit of, you know, <laughs> inconsistencies in my voice. I would like to apologize for that. Now, when we look at the names of Jehovah, we are going to be looking at eight names of Jehovah. I want to start with this side note regarding this. Now, if you are studying this and you are on GIBC Bible School or you come here and you study the Word of God, which is amazingly been given to you for free, you have to understand that you must take time on your own and ask the Holy Spirit to give you revelation. I am hoping that when you get this information, you sit down on your own and you are able to study and ask the Holy Spirit to take you further. I want to encourage everyone who is on this network studying. Please don't end by just listening to this message. I want to invite you to go open scriptures. I want to ask you to use this material that we are giving you. That you can use it to even go further in the word of God. Now, when you get this material, and I want to say you sit down with these names of Jehovah and ask the Lord to give you revelation through his Holy Spirit while you are reading the scriptures regarding the name of Jehovah. When you bring these names before the Lord, these names are not just mere names. They come with power. These are names of God or Jehovah that reveal a certain function and power of God. Now, if you get revelation and you tap into it, I want to say to you, I stand here today as a testimony of the function of God. Let us not just study these names, but let us use them as needed. They come with power behind them. These names are scripture. They are in the Bible. Verses have been written around them. Let us use them and call the power, the function, functional power of God when it comes to the situation in your life or around you that um, requires this particular name. Now the eight names that we have here is Jaila, Jehovah Jaila, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Sidekun, Jehovah Riha, Jehovah Kedesh, and Jehovah Rapha. Now your name is, it will be what will be known. It shows the attributes of God. He is eternal. They show aspects of who he is. And that is his nature. He is a covenant God. We have access to him when we look at these names. Surrender to him and we allow him to do the work in our lives. These names also fill and we as ought to make sure that we fill our mouth with his word and speak it over to ourselves. The definition of Jehovah, it's Yahweh, which is Hebrew. Or Jehovah Greek to be meaning simply but profoundly I am who I am I will be who I will be and that really brings so much power and this can be our Redeemer this can be outside of time this can be never changes the same in the beginning as it is in the present and will be in the future I love when Moses asked God who 
he should call him when the children of Israel asks him who has actually sent him. So Moses is given um, instructions by God. But remember, the main instruction was to go and set the people free. Now, Moses asks God when the people ask him, who has sent you? Who has given you these words? Who should he say he is to them? And God says to Moses that he must say, I am, has sent me. Now, just imagine that. That statement on its own is so profound so profound because there's no way we can define all the aspects of God but these eight names will give you a couple of areas that we can kind of describe a certain aspect of God or attribute of God in that sense but I love the notion of names for over the years God has given me so much revelation about a name remember a name is a get. A name is a get to tap into the supernatural. It can be a get into tapping into the powers of darkness, which we know the powers of darkness comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But a name, most importantly, because we know the origin is God, the name is a get for you to tap into the power of the blessings of God. Now, as we look at these names of Jehovah or Yahweh, I pray that you can have so much revelation to use these names with revelation. Study them and use them with revelation because there's power behind a name and most importantly, the name of God. So the first one is Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. Genesis chapter 22 verses 14. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. As it is called, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. God is our provider. Matthew chapter 6 verses 30 to 32. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown, into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what should we wear? Verse 32. For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Now, if you are right now in that season where you are requiring the provider to come in, the provider in whichever sense you are asking, you want him to come in. Tap into this. It is amazing that in Matthew chapter 6, we see Jesus himself, the son of God, himself bringing the father in and giving this aspect of the father to us. You know what is so, so powerful? Is that the Bible says here, you of little faith. In other words, why are you worried when you have a God who is your provider? Tap into this provider by speaking this aspect or attribute of God in your life. Let us prophetically speak this aspect in our life. I have seen and tapped in this so many times. Now the enemy comes and shows you areas whereby you are going like, where is God? Now instead of you allowing the enemy to push the question of where is God, why not you stand in the real answer? And this is Jehovah as we can see Jaira. Stand and call on Jehovah Jaira, the provider. Right now in your situation, you will be amazed the power you tap in. I want to say again to repeat this. It is so important that you have a revelation. The moment you have an encounter with this Jehovah Jailer, I want to say to you, child of God, there will be no place in which you will doubt that God can provide. I have seen this the moment I encountered God the provider. Regardless of how huge the need is, he has come through. 
regardless of how huge the need is. He has always come through. He has every single time come through. As he come through on my time, no, on his terms. On his terms and on his time. But he has always come through. Tap into this aspect of God. The second one is Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner. Exodus chapter 17 verses 15. And Moses built an altar and called its name, The Lord is my banner. There is always a battle, but keep your hands raised to God. Believe that his word is true. He is our banner, our victory. Isaiah chapter 55, and we can see verses 11, it says, So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Now this is the Lord our God. Now when you read the word of God, and you can also read Isaiah chapter 54, it talks about that no weapon forged against us shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up in judgment against us, the Bible says we shall condemn. And how come that? Because the Lord is already our victory. He has already given us victory. Now, when you look at this aspect, attribute of God, the Lord is our banner. The Lord has already given us victory. Now, it gives me just a, just a picture of, I remember years when we used to go into sports and we, maybe our team was playing and we are holding the banner up. And that is the banner of the logo of our school, of our team. But it is something that we, we don't put down. If you got tired, you gave it to another one. Now, there was also a banner that was constantly standing on top of that field of the, the teams that are, are competing. And that banner sometimes was to just inform everyone that these are the teams that are competing. But it was also to remind the team that we are here for them. And it is so important to understand that God is, is, is our banner. He has already given us victory. It's in our hands. And victory has already been lifted in the air. And you as a child of God must lift up your eyes. Should I say your head? <laughs> but it's better I say your eyes. Lift up your eyes and look at that banner. The victory is already given to you. It's already done. And Moses, uh, sorry, David says, um, I'll lift up my, my eyes unto the hills. Where will my help come from? And it says, my help will come from the Lord God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. That is where we lift our eyes. We lift them up and we look at the banner who is our God. Are we looking at the skies or the clouds? No. David is talking about I lift up my eyes into the heaven and I will look at my banner. And that is Jehovah. As we can see here, Nisi, our banner. You get in there and if you need that strength in your life, tap in for that get is available. The third name is Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is peace. This is something that I love. I know that I love all of them, <laughs> but I think for so many seasons I've tapped into Jehovah Sh uh, Shalom. Judges chapter 6 verse 24. So Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it the Lord is peace. To this day it is still in Ophrah of the Asbias rights. We need to find peace in our battles and specifically in our Christian life. We have to find peace. And that peace has to move from peace to rest. I always say that our peace must move from a place of just peace to a place of just more than peace, which is called rest. Rest in the Lord. God told the children of Israel when they they took over the land of Canaan at this particular time. He told them that I give you rest on all sides. They shall be rest on all sides. And that is what God desires from us. Not just peace, but to move to a place of resting in the Lord. When we are weak, he becomes 
strong. Second Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 10. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecution, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. In our weakness, he is our strength. Who? Our parents, who our partners know God is our strength. Second Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 9. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Very importantly, no matter what you are going through, find the peace of God. Find Jehovah Shalom. And I, have, I, I love to say this again. When you were Christian, you are not exempted from attacks, from troubles of this world. You are going to face them until the day you are taken into glory to be with him. We do not only have to have peace when we are in that place of glory. He has given us peace today, here where we are. Will troubles stop? No, I promise you they will not stop. Sadly, they will not stop. But God has promised us that there is peace that we can tap in. We will not cry like the world around us. We will not fear like the world around us. Because he is with us and he is within us. And because he is within us, he has given us peace. If right now you are watching me and you are struggling, you are anxious, you are having uh, panic attacks, you are anxious, you are restless, I want to say to you, tap in the gate of peace. Tap in Jehovah Shalom. He is your peace and he is available to move you from a place of peace to, sh to a place of rest. And when you get that peace, child of God, I want to say to you, guard it with everything inside of you. Guard it jealously and don't allow the enemy to take it away. The enemy is looking for these precious things that we are holding on to. If the enemy can take away that peace from you, I am telling you something. You have lost something big as a child of God desire to be in that place of rest and do not allow the enemy to remove you from that place ever. Guard it jealously. The things that are happening around us, the attacks, um, the offenses, everything that the enemy is trying to do around us, he wants to move us from that place of peace because in that place of peace is where we operate as children of God. The next one is Jehovah Shammah. Now the Lord is there, uh, Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 35. All the way around shall be 18,000 cubits. The name of the city from that day shall be, the Lord is there. Ezekiel saw, saw Jerusalem where God was. God promised his people that he was there and not to lose hope. Jesus is coming back. So we must not lose hope. Revelation chapter 19 verses 16 says, And he shall, on his robe and on his high, on thy thigh, he shall, and he, sh, he has, let me repeat this, and he has on his robe and on his thigh, a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now he lives in us. We are temples of him. Never to Leave us or forsake us. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 and Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 6. And you can read that and find that out. But one thing I want to say here is that when you tap into this Jehovah Shama, you get to understand that he is with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Child of God, in the time of grieving and mourning, he has not left you. 
He has never and he will never, even in the time of grief, which is one of those times where we feel so alone because if we have so many people around us. But at that particular time, we feel like we are alone. He says, I am with you, even in that time. I will never leave you or forsake you. Whatever you are going through at this particular time, he is with you. Just tap into this gate. Just tap into Jehovah Shammah. And amazingly, the glorious thing ever is that Jesus Christ is coming back for us. We are not left even on this earth after this Jesus Christ is coming back for us. That is how much we are loved. And tap into that and understand. He is here with you. But he's also coming back for us. The next one is Jehovah, sorry, <laughs> my notes. It's Jehovah Sdeken, the Lord, our righteousness. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5 to verse 8. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. A king shall reign and prosper and they set you judgment and righteousness in the earth. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell safely. Now this is his name by which he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives, who brought us up, the children of Israel, from the land of Egypt. Verse 8, but as the Lord lives, who brought us up and led the descendants, the house of Israel, from the north country and from all the countries where I had driven them and they shall dwell in their own land. We cannot be righteous without Jesus. Jesus is prophesied already in Jeremiah that he's going to come and he is already called the Lord of our righteousness. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 it says, but now in Christ Jesus you can once where far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. That is how far we were, but we have been renewed, brought near through the blood of Jesus Christ. And it's so important that we get to understand that righteousness is not achieved by works. Righteousness is only achieved through Jesus Christ. So how do you achieve that? You achieve that by receiving him, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior. And the moment you do that, you are accepting that I am a fallen man. I have sinned and I am disconnected from God. And today I receive the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. And the moment that is done, then you are connected to a relationship through God. And it's very important for us as children of God to understand. And this is the Jehovah that we are talking about that connects us. He's our righteousness and he has given us Jesus Christ. The next one, Jehovah Rahai. Now the Lord, my shepherd, Psalms chapter 23 and verse 1, famously and very powerful. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The shepherd is responsible for everything for the flock. Jesus is our shepherd. When we read John chapter 10 and verses 11, it says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Now, when we look at the Lord here and we tap into this gate, it is so awesome to understand that God has not left us. We are the sheep. He is our shepherd. The Bible says they, I shall not lack anything. In other words, when you have a shepherd as God, you shall not lack anything. Now we are talking about anything. Now this Bible that I'm reading here says, I shall not want. Because I have a shepherd, I am full. I have everything that I need. We don't have to get anything out of God. We have everything we want because he is 
our shepherd. And if you are in wanting, it is available for you to call him and ask him to come into your life. I want to repeat this, children of God. We don't have to get anything out of God. He has got everything that we need, everything that we want. He has got it. So many times we tell ourselves we are children of God, but we go out to get what we want. We go out of God. We go out and we disobey his word. We don't dwell in his word. We don't dwell in a place of faith. My father, you are my shepherd. You will take care of me. We go out. It's just like the sheep because the shepherd looks after the sheep. Just like the sheep going from their shepherd and going to another shepherd to get something they want. And then they come back to this shepherd for a specific thing. God is our shepherd. And we shall not want because why he provides every aspect of our life is provided through his word. He provides it. The next one is Jehovah Kaddish. Now the Lord, our sanctifier, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 7 to verse 8. Consecrate yourself therefore and be holy, for I am the Lord your God. And you shall keep my statutes, perform them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. We can only be holy when Christ wraps his garment of holiness around us. And this can be seen in Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 4. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through us, call unto Christ and his holiness and allow his work in you to make you holy. It is only the work of Christ, the garment of holiness from Christ that can make us holy. He is the only one who was able to walk on this earth on through the temptations of this earth but did not sin he is holy wrap yourself around the garments of jesus christ through the spirit of god and you will also walk as holy the last name jehovah rapha the lord our healer exodus chapter 15 verse 25 and said if you delicately heed the voice of the lord your god and do what is right in his sight give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes i'll put none of these sicknesses on you which have brought on the egyptians for i am the lord who heals you jesus has paid the ultimate price it is already done first peter chapter 2 verse 24 who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we having died to sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Now I know this is well, well known practiced. It is so important for me to reemphasize this. Child of God, are you needing healing? Now I'm talking about healing emotional healing and physical healing he is available jehovah rapha is available call unto him tap into the revelation of this god that is the healer when you tap into this revelation and you encounter the god who heals yahweh who heals i am telling you something you will understand that god according to his word God, according to his word, does not want you to be afflicted with sickness. He wants to heal you completely. If you are right now down with depression, Jehovah Rapha wants to heal you. Get into the word of God. Ask for revelation. The moment your mortal mind will get out of that and get the revelation, you will see tap into god the healer we must call on each of these names and understand that god loves us and wants to show himself to us god bless you